she put a pot for she hair and gun. Then my leap first swung out from the dam. Basket for she head, bucket in each hand. Hold up for she frack, I wanna she run son. To the market, them a go. For the morning, the day is dawning. For Kaka Pro to give the villagers a warning. Rise and shine, the birds them a sing. All animal tech torn as them join in the waking. Kaka Pro, Dagaba, Donkey Bray, Horse, and they even duck a qua. Kaka Pro, Dagaba, Donkey Bray, Horse, and they even duck a qua. Come and hear this sweet story that tell the people about life in the country. All day a back down, me now I come home. He naga jackass yard for fetchy load. Cock the shy hand, bag over shoulder, running by his side, a red sea and rover from the farm, them a come. So now go down, but up the river. Some washing clothes, some folks are bathing at the water. Fisherman, they catch them a bring. From a canoe boat, man, them start a floating. Aymara, Kwakwari, Dale Baka, Kuma, Kuma, even local nanny. Aymara, Kwakwari, Dale Baka, Kuma, Kuma, even Banga Mary. Listen to this sweet story that tell the people about life in the country. Them children glad when the weekend come. Out in the yard, them all gather around. Some are play catcher, some making house from straw. Two who come later, a grandma or grandpa, all a sit down just away. Moonlight so bright, it's just the right time To listen story, I to say a little nursery rhyme Grandpa voice a echo in the night As he tell you tell some pick me a devil fright Olaigan, Mungeza, Massa, Kurma, Bura, Nancy, even Watamuma Olaigan, Mungeza, Massa, Kurma, Bura, Nancy, even Watamuma <laughs> Yeah, man, that's the true story that tell the people about life in... Hello, this is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. All right. Hey, guess what? Good evening. You thought I was running late, right? But we are here. And as you know, it's International uh, Women's Day. And, you know, we have to do up our hair. We have to ensure that all is well with us. Uh, I did my nails and everything in preparation for this show because we have uh, uh, the former First Lady of Guyana. That's correct. You remember her, uh, Sandra Granger. She is here with us to talk about women's issues and uh, maybe other stuff if I have an extra minute or two to ask an extra question. And we also have attorney at law, uh, Shellen Washington, to talk not legal matters with us, but to talk women's issues as well. So uh, thank you all for sharing the link. Uh, thank you all.
Thank you all. So let's get ready to rock and roll. I know it's a busy night for a lot of you, uh, especially you women. Happy International Women's Day to all, every single one of you. So let's begin. Let's get with our guest. We're the operator. Uh, Lemon, can we have our guest on, please? Let's go. Our uh, There we go. There we go. The I don't know. I was just about to say Honorable First Lady, but even if I say that, I wouldn't be wrong. Uh, but uh, let me welcome our guest this evening. Honorable Sandra Granger, good evening to you. I'm not hearing you. Okay. Can you, can you, is there a reason why you're not hearing me? Are you, if you turn up your volume, you'll be, you, you, you will hear me. Are you hearing me now? We'll get it. We'll wait for uh, the Honorable Former First Lady Sandra Granger. But let us say, let us welcome the Attorney at Law Shellen Washington. Ms. Washington, good evening and welcome again to Straight Up. Hi, good evening, Mark, and thanks for having me here on Straight Up. All right. Thank you for be, being here with us this evening. Uh, Ms. Granger, are you hearing us now? Are you hearing me now? Okay, are you hearing me now? Not sure that she's hearing us. Let's get to Shalan. Shalan, how important is this day? I know it should be important. Every day should be important, but today specifically is International Women's Day. How important is this day to all women? Mark, I think today is a very important day and it's a way to honor women. As you know, International Women's Day started as a way to honor female workers uh, because of the conditions they were, you know, they worked on the, um, this day was created after protests and much efforts by women to be treated equally in the workplace and to be given better uh, working conditions and equal wages. So I think today is a very, very important day because it marks the line where women are now or should be treated equally on the workplace or given the same type of pay like men. And the working conditions is to some extent in most countries as kind of equalize or become better because of those women who protested and did work hard for this day. So I think it's a very important day. A lot of people uh, tend to focus on the violence. And I think a lot of people forget that uh, International Women's Day is not just about violence, but it's mostly um, about treating women equally like the way men um, were originally treated on the workplace. Um, traditionally, even myself, I would not have been allowed um, Many years ago, females were not allowed to practice at the bar or to be an attorney, and women are, were looked down on holding certain positions in society. But um, thankfully, because of much work and much effort by those who have gone before us, um, women, all women, women of color, women of any race or creed, they're now allowed to, to hold certain positions, to run in offices, and they're under better working conditions. Absolutely. Better working conditions indeed. Uh, let us see if Mrs. Granger, are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me? All right. We seem to be having some audio problems there with uh, Mr. Granger. I'm not sure how we'll be able to fix it. It's not at our end, but uh, Mr. Granger, are you hearing me? All right. Um, here, here is what here is what we will do. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll uh, have to remove her from from uh, the audio and video, and let us see if we can find another way so that you'll able to get her via. I'm sorry, so that you'll able to get her via uh, some maybe just audio. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. So. Let us, sorry about that guys, uh, we want to be able to at least get something from the Honorable First Lady. Hi, yeah. 
Yeah, that, not hearing anything. that's okay. We'll just we'll just work with the audio. Uh, we'll we'll just work with the audio for now. How okay. and and good night, okay, so. good night and welcome. You're live on the air. Uh, how how important okay. is this day? I know this day it should be every day, but today specifically set aside to celebrate and honor uh, women across the world. How important is this day, Mr. Skate Ranger? Well, I think it's it's a very important and historic day for women across the world. And I have to thank you for inviting me, for honoring me with this invitation to speak on this special day for women. Uh, while we have made many steps forward, we still have many miles to go. There are still many challenges facing women, which have been compounded by the COVID pandemic and the economic and social situation around the world, which includes Guyana. So thank you so much. I think it's a, a signal day for women, which we should celebrate, but why remembering that the struggle continues? Yeah, we, we're remembering that the struggle continues because we have a lawyer on with us, uh, Michelle on Washington, she's on with us as well. But before we get back to her, Mr. Granger, you said the struggle continues. Uh, can you talk about a couple of the struggles that women have to go through, especially in today's world? Well, I think there's always this. We're still talking uh, over four decades after the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. We're still talking about equal rights. We're still talking about um as as your other guests would know equality before the law i mean and we might have legislation we have a raft of conventions and agreements and action plans but where are we today and how easily are things uh kicked out from beneath women's feet in the midst of economic or other crises women and children are the first people affected when there's any disturbance in, in, in the peace and security of the world, as we can see with Ukraine right now. And if you think about Yemen, uh, Libya, Syria, other places around the world, Burkina Faso, ERC, all these places, women and the children are, are the ones who are suffering. So we have to struggle onward. We have to hold fast our gains, but we still have to see that there is there are many more mountains to climb. You know, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Granger. Let's head to uh, Attorney Shellon Washington. Growing up in Linden, because uh, I know the last time you were here, you did say that you're originally from Linden, but you're now practicing law in New York, uh, specifically out there in Brooklyn, where your office is located. What was it like growing up in Linden as a, a, as a little girl and even watching your parents, uh, your mom and aunts and so forth? What was it like for you as a little girl? Well... Growing up, I watched my mom as a very strong woman. I, I admired my mom very much because um, she worked, even though my father, he was the main breadwinner in our home. My mother, she owned businesses and um, she started so many businesses. I would have imagined um, those businesses would have grown. But as um, First Lady said, the struggle, it goes on. I, I know that the struggle is by large still very active in countries like Guyana because growing up as a young girl, um, I've, I've seen so many things happen as it relates to women. Um, women were not um, given the same opportunities, I would say, as men. And they weren't respected the way a man would have been respected in Guyana. And one of the things I did notice too, there was a lot of violence against women perpetrated against women, especially in Linden. I know that's not just uh, localized to Linden because I'm pretty sure it went on in most other towns in Ghana, but specifically Linden, there, you know, it, it was a problem. And I think to this day, that's a problem in Guyana, um, the violence against women. And um, one of the things I also noticed, but that's when I got a little bit older, I noticed a lot in Guyana, women are sexualized. And a lot of times to gain positions in companies, um, that's one of the things that women are taking advantage of in order to climb the social ladder. Uh, I did notice a lot in Guyana, apart from the violence, this was an issue. And I think that continues to be an issue to this day. 
are not given that right or the equal rights as a man in Ghana. And they're still fighting, they're still struggling. And I don't think enough is being done to bring it to the forefront to um, cause um, social changes in that respect. And I think somebody has to take the bull by the horn and bring this to the forefront and let people know that women, young girls should be treated fairly and they should be given the same opportunity. A man should not be deemed of more value than a woman. Uh, you would think to this day that something like that should not be, but I believe up to this day it still survives in Ghana. I mean, I live here, so for me, it's not that overt, it's more subtle to see that type of discrimination or, or that type of suppression when it comes to women. And of course, like I said before, the violence, which is a big issue. And I don't think the courts are doing enough because every time you pick up the newspapers in Ghana, you see that a reputed wife was murdered or a wife was murdered or a girlfriend was murdered. So I think more has to be done, especially in Guyana. All right, uh, let's head back to Mrs. Granger. Your take on violence against women and enough is enough being done, especially out there in Guyana. I know as First Lady, you've been busy all, all throughout the country dealing with these issues, but do you believe that enough is being done uh, to cut the, uh, or at least reduce the level of uh, violence against women in Guyana? I have a problem with the word, with the phrase not being done, because I think people are doing um, things in their own little ways to address violence. But Guyana is a strange creature. And uh, you know, you and I know that when people assume that you have a political affiliation, if you're in the opposition and you try to do something, People are warned against you getting through in that area. You know, people are people who, who try to work with you may be surprised. So we have to start thinking, what is this? I think it's for me personally, from examining what has happened, this talking to young women in particular uh, about how they experience physical and psychological violence. I, I know efforts have been made. I know there are programs throughout the country through the various ministries and through organizations. But I think we have to really look at it as a, a what I would think is a, an innate issue of what is our society in Guyana? What is Guyan Guyanese society? And why do we tolerate this level of violence? I'm not a sociologist. But I strongly feel that we have to start from the cradle, from, from the youngest age, to teach our children to respect each other and to respect their dignity. Once we begin with that respect, we will start to understand. Violence against women, gender-based violence, occurs across social and economic strata in all the regions of Guyana. And it's just how we tolerate it. But it's how we have to really train our children and our men and women to really dis uh, determine the levels of respect we will demand and receive. I think from that we will learn to basically look at each other in a different way, not be quick to answer every perceived slight with a word and a blow. I think that's basically it. People are working. I know people are doing work in our little corners. Um, um, my organization did a gender-based violence survey among young people in Georgetown and in its environs and also the media. And we found, and, and this was basically people from in the 20s to 34, 35. And a lot of people did not understand the concept of gender-based violence. They seemed associated with domestic violence. Many of them recognized that there is a problem and that things should be done, but they don't have any concept of the consequences of domestic violence, the legal consequences in particular. So we, we have to start really looking at how we're viewing this as um, as I said, people are working, but how many people 
I mean, and how many people are being reached and accepted that we have to really change how we approach violence in Guyana. Because I think when I when I look at all these accidents, I think uh, and 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 crime, it starts with how we view ourselves as people, how we view ourselves as human beings as well, and we really have to start to how we address this issue in a, in a coherent and comprehensive manner. All right. In, in terms of how we address this in a uh, in a comprehensive and coherent manner, uh, let's get back to the legal aspect of things, Attorney Shellon Washington. Uh, do you think the justice system, based on what you have maybe observed in Guyana, and maybe you're reading about what happens whenever, like, there is a domestic problem, and in most cases, it happens to be a man against a woman. It doesn't mean that there are some women who put some lashes on their uh, male counterpart, but for the most part, it's uh, the violence against women. And oftentimes when it reaches the court, you hear that the uh, female, the wife, girlfriend, or fiance, or whoever, uh, they, they, don't, they no longer wish to proceed in this matter. How hurtful is that to domestic problems? Or is that contributing also in the rise of domestic problems, uh, violence against women in Guyana? Um, Mark, I do believe it's con contributing further or compounding a problem that already exists. Um, the thing is, in Guyana, the system is not what it should be. I think they've tried to some extent over the years to make the law stronger, to prosecute uh, perpetrators. But I think there is a lot of work that still needs to be done to tighten the system. And one of the things we use here in this country is counseling. A lot of times when um, these types of reports gets to the court, even if the, the victim wishes to withdraw the, the complaint, the, the, a lot of times they require, in order for the complaint to be dropped, depending on the number of complaints that came to the court before regarding this victim and, and the perpetrator, they require counseling. Whereas in Guyana, there's no counseling. So if you hit your wife, you hit your girlfriend, or you hit anyone, I don't know if today they changed that that rule or they have made any provisions whatsoever for that. And I did, her first lady mentioned that she doesn't like the term enough, but the reason why I believe the term enough has to be used is because a lot of times people form these groups and it's localized. Like some people will form groups to focus on domestic violence in Georgetown. But what about Linden? What about Burbese? What about Essequibo? What about all these other small villages that are neglected? And that's where the biggest portion or the number of domestic violence issues occur. Because if you focus on Georgetown, you know, Georgetown has resources and there's so many more people there who could create organization groups and they could go around counseling people or offering, you know, to just speak on domestic violence. But when it comes to the other regions, the more remote places, those are neglected. And that's where the issue really lies. Because those people, it's a cultural thing. Its base is deeply embedded in the culture and the way they interact with each other. We know a lot of times people have anger management issue. But is there any counseling for anger management in these countries? No, no one goes to court and the magistrate or the judge propose that a person seek um anger management counseling prior to dropping the charges or prior to the case being dismissed it does it simply doesn't happen in Guyana. there's a lot of things that could be done and i did see like some of the judges who have traveled and they're learning or they've learned you know different ways or mechanisms or means of dealing with this type of issues they would take that knowledge back to Guyana and try to implement it it's for instance the learned judge um there was I, one of the judges I know, he, he worked here in this country and then he retired back to Guyana and he's now a judge there. And I, I saw a lot of the systems that we, uh, that's I think Judge Singh, a lot of the systems we use over here, I noted that it was there and some of it was responsible for that. But the thing is, without people who have the right exposure, to the right knowledge to take it back and to implement it here, it simply doesn't happen. 
it's cultural and it has to, I, I agree with First Lady, it has to be changed on the level of parents teaching their children how to act, how to, how to treat other people, how to respect other people, how to respect women. But again, how is the parent going to teach the children when the parent themselves don't even know how to treat somebody else? Because if you travel, you go to Linden, you go to some of these uh, places, you'll see the way they interact with each other and you see the way they they deal with, with conflict. There's no conflict resolution. The way a lot of Guyanese deal with conflict is with a fist. The way some of the husbands deal with conflict is with a fist. There's no reasoning for the wife. There's no reasoning for the girlfriend. So in order to really change this, you have to change the mentality of the adults first. You got to have groups that sit and discuss this. And the law would simply can't do it without changes to the law. The law has to implement provisions that makes, um, that says, well, you know, if a person comes to the court multiple times with the same type of domestic issue, you must seek counseling. If you don't seek counseling on your third complaint, you'll be put to prison or you wouldn't be, your case would not be dismissed, even if the victim says, I would like to have the charges dismissed. So I think if a victim continuously allow somebody to disrespect them in that regard and drop the charges, it's going to more empower the perpetrator to continue to act that way because he's going to think, well, there's no repercussion. So I can do whatever I feel and there'll be no repercussions. There's The law would not protect the part the victim because the victim is going to go eventually and drop the charges and one of the reasons the most important reasons mark why those victims drop those charges is a lot of times they have nowhere else to go they're living with the perpetrator they're in the same house they have a roof over their head and they have nowhere and they have children and there's nowhere else to go so Absolutely. diana do have i think they do have programs in georgetown where they shelter victims like they have shelters for victims of domestic violence but that's not something that's countrywide. So a lot of the victims, they're poor, they're economically disadvantaged, and they have nowhere else to go. So they'll stay in the violence, and the man will promise that if you drop the charges, you could stay. But if you don't drop it, I will kick you out on the streets. And the, 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 the laws doesn't protect a wife or a spouse in that manner where you can't just throw a person out in the street. You cannot evict a person in this country, in the United States, like that. But unfortunately... In Guyana, anything, anything goes for the, for the ride indeed. And uh, thank you, attorney at law, Shellen there. One of the questions I would probably want to ask you, I'll revisit shortly, is, um, is you do a lot of divorce cases or you have done a few divorce cases and so forth. Uh, um, I, I pray that you wouldn't mention any of the cases. You can't do that anyways. Um, but uh, what are some of the common traits that you see in terms of divorce. Uh, we'll get to that shortly though. Let's head back to the honorable for, uh, former first lady, Sandra Granger. Uh, I know you have your organization. You've been busy working along with uh, young girls and, and women in general. Uh, what are some of the problems in terms of uh, that led to domestic violence, domestic problems that we can uh, at least make some sort of effort to work together to stem uh, you know, the rise of those sort of domestic issues in Guyana? Well, I think it's endemic in Guyana right now, and it, we have to really work to, to end it. But um, I would like to say, um, Ms. Washington mentioned the economic factor um, behind women dropping charges because they have nowhere to go. They're not employed. They're dependent on the, the, the male breadwinner. Um, but there's also the social event where people who might be married and want to leave the man are taken back to the man, because that is your husband. There is that element as well. And I, I don't agree that not everything is focused in Georgetown. There are groups of people working throughout the country. But we have to remember that Demerar has the largest section of the Guyanese population. But things will be centered around the coast. But domestic violence occurs, and there are reports of it. Um, I know the police force used to issue a, a bulletin, a statistical bulletin on, on incidents of domestic violence. And it was found mostly in the coastal areas, partly because it was underreported in the rural area. It's not that people who are not 
uh, being abused, some people felt it was the norm, or they felt it was that the man had a right to dip wife and children. So those were the, those are the things that we live, and we have to really look at it because no, no, but I do not, um, I do not know whether the court has an institutionalized system of counseling and um, people um, perpetrated being sent for specific training and anger management, conflict resolution, and so on. I do know that there are groups that are trying to speak to male perpetrators. I think Health and Shelter has Health and Shelter has a program such as that. I know church groups organize those things, but it is not a formalized legal institute as far as I know. I know the laws have been amended, and we do have a lot of female see, uh, members of the judiciary um, who are working. They, a, a child's court was set up, and, and it's sort of put in place so victims of rape and, uh, and other violence could give their testimonies without facing their um, the, the perpetrator and so on. So things are kind of in, I, I would, things are in place. I, I wouldn't say that, that nothing is being done. I know that a great bit has been done over the years, but the issue is the implementation. And I think we have to recognize the reality of, of, of the social situation in Guyana, where, as Ms. Washington mentioned, you know, the woman is dependent um, on the male. She's thinking of the roof over her head, her children, food, school, everything else, because her work is based, basically doesn't, hasn't been given any tip. She's just working in the house, so she's not bringing money into the home. So in a sense, we have to recognize the value of the labor of the woman and, and really put it to the front of everything. It has to be valued. It has to be recognized. Because I don't think people realize the amount of roles women play in a single day of their lives, and that's it. But we have to we have we have to really help our young people understand as well um, their sexual productive health and rights issue. They need to know what they are entitled to. What are, what what are their rights? So those are all the things we deal with. Lots of things, and I know when you were first lady, you were very busy, busy throughout the country working on these issues. Not, yeah, go ahead. So much in the, it had, COVID has, has um, kept me in the George. Um, I'm still, thinking, thank you. Yeah, sure, and we're glad that you're uh, safe and you're still busy working with your NGO. Before we go, we'd want you to tell our listeners a little bit about that, but before we head back to uh, the attorney, I noticed uh, some folks here are commenting, and I just say uh, good night to all of you. I'm reading some of your comments. Um, Hazeline King is saying here, more laws are needed to protect women against domestic violence. Uh, the attorney, uh, Shellen, answer, respond to uh, Hazeline um, comment, please. Hazeline, you're absolutely correct. I believe more laws are needed to protect um, violence against women. Um, a simple example of that, uh, which haunts me to this day, may I say that, by the way, um, when I was new to the practice, uh, I was admitted in Guyana prior to migrating to the U.S. I was representing one of the perpetrators of such crime, and he took the electric wire on the pole, the bow wire, they call the leave mark, the one that the electric runs through, he took that wire and he beat his wife merciless. She had um, marks all over her body. She went to the hospital and then she filed a report to have him um, prosecuted. Uh, I believe he was a cane cutter. And I represented him, unfortunately. I regret that day. But um, what happened is, the prosecutors that they have in Guyana are so inexperienced. At the times when they run up those charges, uh, they make errors and they make mistakes. And a young attorney like me at that time, just getting out of practice, I learned about um, how a charge should be written and how what details should be in that charge. And if it's not there, how you could get that case thrown out very, very easily 
because it, there's not sufficient information to provide to a defendant to give him knowledge about exactly what he's charged with. And that's exactly what happened. The file jacket was incorrectly written. This poor woman had marks all over her body and she was literally in tears in that court. And I just, um, after the police, uh, they let their case at the end of the uh, initial stage of it, I made an application to dismiss the case uh, on the basis that there was no case, no sufficient case against my client. And I succeeded in um, getting the perpetrator off. And I guarantee he went right back into the society and he probably did the same thing all over again because he had a propensity to commit violence against women. And there weren't anything adequate at that time to protect women. So if, 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 in other instances, they could have been counseling for her. There would have been um, some means to um, maybe a temporary order of protection, something to prevent him from doing that again to her. And then there's something called, if you have more, the third strike rule, if you commit those types of crimes more than three times, even if it was dismissed before, the, the consequence or the penalty would be greater. There were no such checks and balances. So that man went right back into society. So I agree that more has to be done, even if they have to have competent people who are much more experienced with dealing with this type of situation, rewrite the laws to make provisions to adequately protect victims. And I do understand um, that uh, First Lady said they're making efforts, they're doing things, they're taking steps to do that. But as far as I'm aware, and I know from the time I have the last practice in Guyana, I mean, the last time I've done a case in Guyana was 2017. That was a pro bono case, by the way. I did it for um, a family member. But before that, prior to that, I don't know of anything that was done to change the laws that, as it relates to domestic violence against women or even put adequate um, or much more experienced prosecutors to prosecute those cases because those cases are thrown to the magistrate court. That's where they go. And those officers, those police officers, by the way, Guyana is the only country, um, well, not the only, but that's one of the countries based off of the British um, rule where they put police officers to prosecute cases. In the U.S., they don't have that. The persons who prosecute any types of crime, even the smallest or the pettiest of offenses, is the DA's office. They have assistant DAs who prosecute those cases who have much more experience than a police officer who was not given the same training as a lawyer. So I think if it starts from even that part of putting competent people to prosecute those cases and to write up the case jacket, I think it will protect the women, again, much more. And then I think on the converse side of that, we still have to be cautious and careful about those women who make false allegations against men, because that's something we need to be very careful and watch for. That's why I think if the laws are rewritten to be balanced, I think this will be um, very, very helpful in protecting women much more adequately. Uh, well said, Attorney Shellen Washington. We have, uh, and uh, um, Mrs. Granger, are you with us still? Still here, my dear. Yeah, I, you know, I you may have to help me out here. I'm in some problems. I notice a lot of women are on the chat group and they are blazing me. I need your help. They're blazing me because okay. they want me to address you. They're saying you are still the first lady. And they get annoyed when I use the word former. Please help me. They're ganging up on me here tonight. All right? I am the first lady. There is an incumbent. Yeah, but they're... Former first lady, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 but no, I don't know. I, I know in the states they use, they, they call a former president a president, but I don't think that happens in Guyana. I know, but they, they just, they just don't want me to use that word at all. They're ganging up on me. They're wishing you all the best. Since you can't see the comment, I'm sure that uh, Miss uh, Washington can see the comment. Uh, lots of them that are here. Uh, we have here a comment from Allison Richards, and Allison is saying. She saw today that an abuser was sentenced for breaking a court order. Only three weeks. He was very abusive uh, to the kids and the woman and all these manner of things. Now, I know, Mrs. Granger, you have a, an NGO and you go out and you reach out to uh, 
girls and women and so forth in order to teach them in becoming uh, independent, to become entrepreneurs and so forth. Tell us a little bit about your uh, NGO, please. Well, we have been stymied by the COVID pandemic. So we have been uh, had to restrict ourselves and, and really amend our act. So we basically have been going out and about so much, except um, with regard to a project, which was um, uh, my foundation received funding for from Gilead Science of the US. And um, in collaboration and through the Spouses of CARICOM Leaders Action Network, um, I was the deputy chair of the organization when it started. And after my husband demitted, I was asked to remain on the executive committee, but my project started well before that. But um, we are basically looking at encouraging young people to know their sexual and reproductive health and rights and prevent um, STI infections, sexually transmitted infections. So basically that is it. And there is really, uh, really eye-opening to, to recognize the ignorance out there that young people don't really know some things about their own sexuality about their sexual and reproductive health that we need to teach them and to have frank and open discussions uh, with them about so we did the project is basically um, going to be conducted in region four in sophia in the Rupununi and in region one basically to get a cross-section of the of population. But we chose Sophia because Sophia had the largest um, number of teenage um, pregnancies in Georgetown. So that was one of the reasons. And we have worked with the community leaders and the community, and we have trained mentors and peer educators so that they'll go out in the community and teach their peers about sexual and reproductive health. They have been put together some easily um, understandable brochures and posters for them to go with. Um, and we're doing the similar thing around. So if we, we have a target of about 500 people to go, you know, for them, the most of them in Sofia, and then we have in, in the Rupununi in, and in Burima Wiley. So basically, that's one of the th things we did. And then we had a baseline survey on gender-based violence. As I said, this was young men. And we, it basically was revealing to us about the, the, the amount of work we need to do to, to change the socialization of our young people. Because I think the women have heard all the stories about domestic violence and what they should do and the laws, et cetera, the conventions. But um, we really have to start including our young men, um, particularly because I think the older folk, and, and I've spoken to some people, the, the older men might say, yes, 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 and then they go and do what they were doing all the time. But I think we have young men who recognize that there is an issue, um, and, they and they have said that men need help, you know to express themselves, to, to be able to share their emotions and their feelings. So that will help them to relate and to associate and to get some help. But if, if, if they can't verbalize how they're feeling, you know, the, the resort to the, to the blows and the violence. And I often wonder whether the amount of accidents we're having is part of this whole, cons you know, this perception of masculinity and, 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 you know, having power behind the car. So all these things, these things go through my mind when I, I touch the East Bank Road in the mornings to go to town, but these are, these are the things that are happening in Guyana. And we have to wonder, you know, how we are socializing, why it leads us to, you know, Lots. traffic regulations, even at the risk of our own life. Lots of things indeed we have to wonder. Uh, Mr. Sandra Granger is with us this evening. Before we head back to our attorney, I'm looking at the time as well, but before we head back to our attorney, Shellen Washington should be no stranger to many of you. Uh, before she goes this evening, I'll ask that she uh, give her number out and her office address. But uh, Mrs. Granger, 
Uh, not to get off topic, you did say that yes. there is an incumbent first lady in Guyana. Yes. Uh, since yes. since since uh, she has been sitting in that seat, uh, have you gotten a call from her at all to meet as women, women to women, to see how you guys can possibly work to address women's issues across the country? I haven't received any call, but I know Mrs. Ali is a very busy woman. Okay, thank you. That's all. Let's head back to um, very busy indeed. Um, <laughs> let's head back to uh, attorney, and I, I should have asked our operator to remove that so that the folks can see my facial expression when I say very busy indeed. Uh, Ms. Shannon Washington, attorney at law, uh, you do a lot of divorce cases. What are some of the common traits that you see in these divorces, the cases that you've done? Um, believe it or not, um, Mark, a lot of it comes from um, emotional abuse. You know, like we said earlier, um, over here, it's not that easy for, for a perpetrator to commit uh, actual violence. But a lot of times they verbally abuse their spouse or they become verbally abusive. And one of the things I think leads to the verbal abuse is there's a lot of disrespect to women. A lot of infidelity on the part of the husband. Um, there are instances where there's infidelity from the wife, but there's a lot, especially among West Indian people. Well, you know, you know, in Guyana, you say infidelity in the U.S. and so forth, but you know, in Guyana, what they call it, right? There's another <laughs> term they call it in Guyana. Let me see if our uh, um, first lady, former first lady, let, let us see if she knows what's the other term. Uh, infidelity, they use a different term in Guyana. Let me see if she's in with the young people team. Well, I am not a, a young person, so I can't tell you what the young people think, but I know years ago there was this calypso, a deputy essential, you know, uh, the, the, there was a calypso about the deputy being essential, basically saying that the, a man, it was essential for a man to have a, a side piece. So, I mean, there is but in Guyana, I grew up as the outside woman, you know. Okay, you grew, you grew up with that. Much. But is it something infidelity now? They kind of break it down in Guyana. It's called blow. Oh, no, blow was around in my youth, boy. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Say, yes. say, get blow. You know what you're talking about. Oh, I, yes. thought, I thought it was a new something. Sorry, I'm, no, 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 no. Gosh, I'm behind time. I'm not going to tell you how long ago I knew. How long ago you knew about Blow? Why well, it has to be half a century, at least. So Blow, Blow has been happening a long time now. <laughs> yes. Get Blow, you know, say when you get Blow, you get Blow. Back in the day when 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 somebody get Blow, was it uh, because we see a lot of violence now against women, and most in most cases is when Blow plays a part. Did we see the sort of violence we're seeing now? when blow happened back in your time? No, 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 no. But when we, the thing is, you say when you get blue, it, it, it means when when your partner was unfaithful. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, as I say, he had a side piece. You know, but... I got you. If, if I don't recall the... I mean, there was violence. I remember mm -hmm. reading in the papers at the time of a man who came in for lunch and his wife had been listening to one of the popular radio serials in the home, and she hadn't finished his lunch. So according to his testimony in the court, he just picked up bench and lashed him, and he was before the course for that. So that there was domestic violence uh, around at the time, but I don't think it was this, it was the level of you know, that the man would push his spouse, his, his partner's head in a bucket and drown her, you know, and that kind of thing, or burn her, burn her because she says, "Well, don't come back." Then. Wow. I mean, it, it very rarely in those days, but we just have this um, what I call it. I think it's the banality of violence. We see it every day, you know. Yeah, I honestly I did. You, Sorry, go ahead, um, I, Mrs. Green. I tell you, I pray every time I hit that junction to join the spam road in the morning. I say, "Lord, carry me safely and bring me home." Because if you see the nonsense on that, people are ignoring the traffic set and you know, overtaking one another as they're coming up 
bridge and another sand truck coming in the opposite direction. And, you know, I said, it blood cold, man. I cannot imagine it, but I, it's just, it seems to me that there's not a backdrop or, or a, a, a recognition of the sanctity of life. Wow. And it, it, it links to the kind of fact we're seeing around us. And indeed, like, yeah. And, and thank you so much for uh, informing me because I honestly, even growing up on the quarantine, I didn't hear of the word blow. It's only recent, uh, in recent times I've heard it and I've just heard about it in Guyana, blow. Um, I, yes. As a teenager, we knew about blow. <laughs> we knew about blow. Mm -mm. blow. Uh, as a teenager? Yeah. As a teenager, yes. And that we know long, long ago that was. Okay. Thank you, though. But uh, let's head back. Uh, attorney, Miss um, Washington, I'm sorry that I interrupt you when you said infidelity. And I just wanted to break that down for Guyanese term that they say blow in Guyana. Not in car horn, blow your car horn or whatever, but blow. Sorry, continue, yeah. um, Mrs. Washington. Yeah, that's right, uh, Guyana, they refer to it as blow. So um, a lot of it, a lot of the divorce comes from um, infidelity or uh, there's just a breakdown in the relationship in terms of communication. Uh, over here, people are very, very busy. So um, a lot of times they fail to find time for their spouse and it leads to a breakdown and leads to the infidelity. And then the infidelity leads to disrespect against women if it be yelling or shouting or using derogatory terms to the wife mostly, you know, that tends to happen a lot. And I just just want to make it clear that there's instances where, you know, the wrongdoing is on the woman's side. The infidelity, sometimes in limited cases that I've seen, infidelity would come from the wife. Um, the wife would leave for somebody else. Um, you know, just, just I could talk about, because I'm not take, talking about any specific name, um, because I do know an instance where the wife actually left to be with another another man. And um, she got pregnant by another man. So those things happen. And a lot of times um, in this country, you know, like you guys were referring to whether or not there was blow for, in, whether or not there was violence, domestic violence involved in the infidelity. Sometimes it do happen on the side of the male when the woman end up being the perpetrator or being the one who is engaged in infidelity. Um, that do happen in some limited cases. But as you know, um, violence is not tolerated. There are instances of it here, but um, it's swiftly controlled by the courts based on you know a temporary restraining order. That's the first thing that man needs to consider. That's the first thing a victim would be given if she goes and she complains of temporary restraining order against the man. He can't go to the matrimonial home no more. You can't go around her workplace. You can't go anywhere where she would be present. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Attorney Shellen Washington with us. Uh, before we go to closing remarks, I just want uh, folks to know that um, Attorney Shellen Washington, her office is on Utica Avenue there in Brooklyn. Uh, for persons who may have some sort of legal matters, uh, matter, not just divorce, but uh, what's your telephone number? How can they contact you and your office location, please? Um, thanks, Mark. Uh, the telephone number is 718-877-3100. Uh, um, my office is located at 455 Utica Avenue uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, we mostly see um, folks on appointments, but occasionally we do take walk-in. But just be warned, um, because of um, my busy schedule and the other attorney who also works with me, our schedule, we're not always there, but there's always a paralegal or a clerk there. I, I noticed because a lot of people have made contact with you and uh, you are very reasonable. You reach out to people and so forth, uh, which is good. And so that has been a good feedback. I noticed there's a Julius Ford says she's expensive. Well, she's a lawyer. <laughs> and lawyers have to pay. I don't know, Guyanese or something else. I could I could I could tell Julius used to get licks. <laughs> I don't think Julius, I don't think Julius um has ever used an attorney service because if he did, he would know that when it comes to um prices, I'm one of the most reasonable because I take care of my people. 
I take yeah. care of West Indian people because um, if you go to the Jewish or, I mean, I'm not being, in, yeah. in, you know, disrespectful in any way to anybody, but if you go to most of the other attorney's office, you're going to pay the full price. And I do try to work with people. I try to help them. Yeah. That's what I try to do. A lot of, a lot of feedback already. Don't, don't, don't worry, Julius. Julius probably vexed about something tonight. But good night <laughs> to you, Julius. Good night. If you if if you probably have not gotten a, a a proper quote, give her a call again. She is great at what she does. Shalon Washington, your closing remarks and advice to women on this day, International Women's Day. I want to thank all your viewers first of all, Mark, um, for being here on this program and watching and listening to us tonight. And also, uh, I want to thank all your supporters who continuously support my office. They call. They seek legal advice. Um, I want to thank all those people and for the ones who just give comments and, you know, they're encouraging. I want to say thanks to those people also. Um, the other thing is, um, Mark, you, you just asked me a question, Mark. Yes. Yes. I'm here. You just asked me a question. Could you ask, repeat that question, please? No, no. I just basically asked for your closing remarks um, and address basically to women. I've noticed that um, Julius, Julius responded. Julius said, cool. He's glad that you're reasonable. But I suspect he was asking a question, but uh, he forgot the question mark at the end. So, Julius, if you're going through whatever you're going through, give the attorney, Shellen Washington, a call, 718-877-3100. Um, address women briefly before we go as to how how they should be proud of themselves, how they should be proud of who they are, independent-minded, independent thinking, and so forth and so on, especially our single parents, uh, single mothers as well. Okay, I want to say to all those young women out there, um, single mothers, whoever you are as a woman, I want to let you know that um, you can do it. You have to believe in yourself. And you could rise above any form of discrimination, any form of any type of uh, force that is trying to keep you down as a female, as a woman, as a mother, as a, a sister. You can rise above that. Um, I watched my mother as a strong woman and I was influenced by her. And I want to tell all you mothers out there that you should strive to demonstrate to your young daughters that she should strive for independence. Encourage your daughters, encourage young women to strive to be independent. Because I think once women learn that independence is a way that would cause you to be able to stand firmly on your feet and avoid most of the downfalls that I see a lot of women uh, endure, especially in Guyana, where I'm from, um, I think that will be a good thing. If you continue to encourage, we have to encourage each other. We have to, you know, cheer each other along and be happy for each other. And I think that's more important as a woman to cheer for each other and to help encourage each other along, not to pull each other down. We're all in this together and all women everywhere need encouragement to continue to do whatever it is that they're trying to do and whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. And I just want to leave this closing remark with you guys, with women, all women everywhere, that you can do it. Believe in yourself, like I said, and you can accomplish it and continue to strive for excellence and do not allow anyone to make you feel like you can't accomplish the same thing that a man can do. You are capable. I have done it. My mother strived when she was younger to do it. And I know that you guys have the same ability as I do to become whatever it is you want to be. Thank you for listening to me tonight. And I hope that you enjoy whatever is left of the night. Absolutely. Julius Ford again. Julius is a busy guy. I mean, I know all of the other folks are commenting. Carl Miller, Patricia Kissoon, Joyce Van Kooten, uh, lots of people. Julian Emanuel, uh, good evening, Patricia Graves Andy, and uh, lots of uh, I've even noticed Sean Anthony Ben, all the way from uh, South, <laughs> South, uh, Aubrey Barker Road, Renee McKenzie Talbot, and all others. Tony Hack, I see you guys. I mean, I, I wish I can comment and, and just um, identify every one of you, but thank you all so much. I don't want to go um, until we hear from our former first lady, because if I say first lady, she is going to bump me as what they say in Guyana. 
Uh, Shellon Washington, the attorney at law, I've noticed some folks asking for your number. It's 718-877-3100. area code. David Watts, good evening to you. Uh, Madam Granger, yes, Mistress Granger, yes, I know on this day today, who prepared breakfast for your man? I prepared breakfast for myself. And nothing at all? Nobody came in and says, no. Sandra, nothing on this day? You know, I wake up very early to do my cooking before I leave for Georgetown. And I leave very early to avoid crawling through Eastbank traffic. We have to leave here about 5.30, quarter to 6 to get to town on in a reasonable time, you know. This morning, I took an hour and five minutes to get from the turn by South Rhinebelt along that wow. back road of my, the old back road, an hour to get from that point to the East Bank Junction, wow. up to, to Bank Road to Eccles. So it, that's to tell you what traffic is like on the, at that East Bank corridor. All right. So I, cook, I got and I cooked for myself, and mm -hmm. I had my breakfast, and then I went to swim. Mm -hmm. I, I got you. I got you. I notice how you, you you're very intelligent. You, you you're doing it cleverly. Um, you, you're in you're in one say where y'all had for lunch and who face you saw early in the morning. That's okay. So I am telling you that I am capable of, 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 of starting and getting my breakfast at the same time. <laughs> give 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 my give my regards to your husband. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's the point. Oh. Yeah. And he's very helpful. G give my, you know, the after thing. all this, I have some experience in these things. So. <laughs> I, I got you. <laughs> your, your closing remarks uh, addressing women on International Women's Day. Please, go ahead. Well, I think, first of all, every woman must celebrate her uniqueness. We share some experiences, but we are all unique. And so I, I find the beauty the beauty in women in that everyone has her own story it might dovetail with others but it is unique because it's her experience and one thing i always told um the women i worked with an experience may be good or bad but if you learn from it, the good experience and the second thing i want to echo what miss washington said earlier is that always remember you have sisters at your side but you have to choose your sister sometimes. You know, not everybody who wants to go on sport with you is a sister and a friend. same time the children work whatever we can do it and i think there are many possibilities especially for our younger people but they need to empower themselves get their education and, and find the right path and the right mentors to achieve and become whatever they want to be i'm very proud of some of the women that I work with who are going after their education and teachers studying to be pilots, going back to school, teen moms going back to school to get their secondary education, um, pass their, write their CXC exams because they recognize that they need the patients to get a better paying job so that they wouldn't just be, you know, earning minimum wage. So I'm proud of those girls who all the, the challenges that they face decide that they want to go ahead and to learn, learn learn something and um, and become whoever they want to be. Applaud them. I'm not going to tell them what they do, but once they know they have the spark in them, I will be always there to support them and to find people who will help and support. So my advice to women is like, I, I, I steal a quote from the US Army, be all that you can be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be all that you can be. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. And the name of your NGO, in case our folks have missed it, what's it, please? Well, it's it's the Anira Foundation. And we've been working quietly for the past couple of years 
doing what we have to do. And I think, can I also say thank you to, to my donors in Guyana and the diaspora who have, have helped us to, to assist teen mothers and shut-ins and seniors and uh, of young children um, through their donation. And um, we really helped us to, to achieve a lot during this year of the pandemic when so many people were, uh, let me put it uh, delicately, financially challenged because of, of, of other issues, including, I want to say thank you publicly to all those people and organizations in, di in the diaspora and in Guyana um, who saw and, and shared our vision and helped them to accomplish much during the past year. And I hope and I know I can continue to count on it in the future. Thank you so much, Mark. You know, before you go, before you go, uh, it's International Women's Day. I know you love to sing, you love karaoke and all these sort of things. Uh, you're, catching me, you're not catching me again this time, boy. <laughs> why not? Just something for the women. Something. You know, Whitney Houston has something out, I'm every woman. And Shaggy got something called Strength of a Woman. Bob Marley has yeah. No Woman, No Cry. Let's hear something from you before we go on this International Women's Day. Come on, you can do it. Oh, gosh. Keep the dream alive. Don't let it die. If something deep inside Keep something to do, never give up, oh, never give up on you, oh, don't give up, that's it. Thank you so much, don't give up, and uh, I'm looking at the comments, I'm a lot, you, you have a, you have a wonderful voice, trust me, it's beautiful. I was trained by the Sisters of Mercy at St. Joseph's High School. Oh, really, beautiful voice, yeah. my gosh, yeah. All right, but uh, yeah. see, <laughs> thank you. No, no, I'm. thank you so much indeed. I appreciate it. And a lot of people do love and appreciate you. They wish you all the best, you and uh, your other half, all the best. But thank you, though, so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. Next time, we want to see you on video. I know it's not your fault. Yeah, well, I mean, I was there seeing you, but nobody could see or hear me. So I, I know. Anyway. Yeah, but I mean, that's technology for you. It's not like yeah. a typewriter. You can't pull out a page and push in another one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to say thank you, Mark, for having me. And thank you to your listeners. I haven't seen comments, but I do thank them because I know I, I do have a lot of support. And um, that's what keeps me going. Thank you because so much. All yeah. Focus on the price at the end of the, uh, 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 of the day. I like, I like that. So focus on the price. And a happy Women's Inter International Women's Day to all the women and all the men who support the women out there. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, guess what? That's our former first lady, Sandra Granger. Always willing. And, and, and look, this was a last minute uh, invitation. I, I, I call her at the last minute. And, and she didn't say no. She says, hey, guess what? Why not? She didn't say it's the last minute. I, I, I'm not prepared. Uh, I, I can't make it. She's like, okay, I will be. What time? The only thing, though, she said, 30 minutes. And hey, we way past 30 minutes. I want to thank. As usual. I, I know, as usual. My God. Yeah, as usual. Thank you all so much for being with us this evening. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. But guess what? Tom Anderson. Tom Anderson will be back with us tomorrow. And we will get real down into the politicking of things, uh, money laundering, and all manners, right? Good. So have a great rest of the evening. God bless you. And again, happy International Women's Day to all of you, all of our listeners, all of our female listeners, and those male who played a part. Uh, let me start over back. Those male uh, who also participate in the homes and so forth and so on. And you guys got me up. I'm looking at some of your comments there. You're not going to trick me, but I'll say, male, there are fathers out there who play the role, uh, the mother and father as well. I say uh, congratulations to them as well. All right? Good. So God bless you all. See you all tomorrow. Same place, same time, right here on 107.1 FM. God bless you. 
She put a pot when she hair and gun. Them a leak first one out on the dam. Basket when she head, bucket in each hand. Hold up and she frack, I wanna she grandson. To the market, them a go. For the morning, the day is dawning. For Kaka Pro to give the villagers a warning. Rise and shine, the birds them a sing. All animal tech turn as them join in the waking. Kaka crow, dagaba, donkey bray horse and they even duck a qua. Kaka crow, dagaba, donkey bray horse and they even duck a qua. Come and hear this sweet story. That tell the people about life in the country. All day a back down, me now I come home. He naga jackass the eye for fetch the load. Hawk le shy hand, bag over shoulder, running by his side. A Rexy and Rover from the farm, them a come. So now go down, but up the river. Some washing clothes, some folks are bathing at the water. Fisherman, they catch them a bring. From a canoe boat, man, them start a floating. Aymara, Kwakwari, Hail Baka, Kuma, Kuma, even Lokonani. Aymara, Kwakwari, Hail Baka, Kuma, Kuma, even Banga Mary. Listen to this sweet story. That tell the people about life in the country. Them children glad when the weekend come. Out in the yard, them are.